SpaceX is making remarkable progress with Ship 39 and Booster 18, the duo set to fly on Starship Flight 12. At this pace, many believe a launch before the end of this year is entirely possible, while others think it'll slip into next year. To settle the debate, SpaceX's vice president of launch recently revealed the exact launch time frame during a major space event. So, when exactly will it happen? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Behind SpaceX's success isn't just the brilliant leadership of Elon Musk, it's also the thousands of key people who keep pushing the company forward every single day. And of course, the most prominent among them is Gwyn Shotwell, a phenomenal leader who practically carries the workload of three executives, and has been instrumental in securing multi-billion dollar contracts with NASA and the U.S. Department of Defense. But she's not the only powerhouse at SpaceX. Another key figure is Kiko Donchev, currently the vice president of launch. Donchev joined SpaceX back in May 2010, starting out by leading the development of lithium-ion batteries for the Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 rocket. Thanks to his work, the now iconic Falcon 9 can achieve hundreds of successful launches per year, something once thought impossible. Over time, he rose to oversee all launch operations across every SpaceX vehicle, and it was this same brilliance that brought him to the Space Economy Summit 2025, a major space event held in London on November 5th. During his speech, Donchev confirmed that Starship Flight 12 is expected to launch as early as January 2026. That announcement officially closed the door on any Starship flights happening in 2025, while that might disappoint some fans, it also marks a major milestone in Starship's evolution. 2025 belongs to Starship V2, and 2026 will usher in Starship VI3. That means SpaceX has been upgrading the Starship line every single year. Pretty impressive, right? And when Kiko mentioned the earliest possible launch being in January, my personal guess is that it could happen around mid-January, maybe even on January 16th, 2026, exactly the same date as Starship Flight 7, the first mission of the VU-2 era. If that turns out to be true, it'd make for a perfect symbolic moment, and the media would have a great story to amplify SpaceX's growing reputation. So, what about you? When do you think the next Starship flight will happen? Drop your prediction down below. If that schedule holds, it means SpaceX still has a little over two months to prepare four key elements for the mission. Ship 39, Booster 18, Launch Pad 2, and the Massey test site. So, will that be enough time? Well, it might actually be faster than we think. Let's start with Ship 39. The latest update shows that it's already been fully stacked with all four sections and is now standing inside Mega Bay 2. On November 7th, the vehicle was even lifted and set down over the transfer tube installed jig, marking another big step forward. What's left now is mainly installing the aft and forward flaps, attaching the heat shield tiles, and then running a cryo test, a crucial step to verify whether the new fuel tanks can withstand extreme cryogenic pressure. Based on that timeline, the vehicle could be ready within a month to a month and a half, meaning it might complete its cryo test by mid-December. After that, the final step will be mounting the payload and installing the flight termination system, FTS, once it rolls back to Mega Bay 2. If everything stays on track, the vehicle is expected to reach its fully flight-ready state by January 10th, roughly one week before launch. Now, let's talk about Booster 18, the super heavy stage that, so far, hasn't begun testing yet. Recent progress shows that its forward section has been fitted with an upgraded hot staging ring, but the booster still hasn't been rolled out to the launch site. According to Kiko Donchev, that rollout is expected to happen within the next few days or weeks. Once it's out, B-18 will first undergo cryogenic testing at the Massey test site, which now features a fully installed booster quick disconnect system. This test will mark the first demonstration of the new V3 hardware and ground integration systems. If everything stays on schedule, the cryo test could wrap up by mid-November, followed by engine installation toward the end of the month. After that, B-18 will move to Pad 2 for its static fire test, where all engines will be ignited together for the first time. Once the static fire is complete, the booster will head back to Mega Bay 1 for detailed inspections and final integration work. 
For now, the booster's timeline still looks reasonable for a potential end-of-year launch, at least on paper. However, the same can't quite be said for the ship and ground systems. The launch pad's readiness remains a critical factor. Flight 12 will be the first mission ever launched from Pad 2. Over the past week, teams have been busy finishing up the new launch mount, adding additional shielding across the base structure to protect it from the brutal forces of a super-heavy liftoff, something Pad 1 knows all too well. Venting activity was recently spotted near Pad 2's tank farm, as SpaceX continues verifying that all systems are functioning properly ahead of the first test campaign for Block 3 vehicles. Just last weekend, water deluge tests were also observed, with massive streams of water spraying into the flame trench, a clear sign that the system is being fine-tuned for its first booster trial. At this pace, the pad may only be ready for booster testing before the end of the year. However, several major upgrades are underway, including a reinforced orbital launch mount, upgraded chopsticks, a strengthened flame trench, and expanded manifolds, all clearly designed with long-term, high-frequency Starship operations in mind. These improvements will form the foundation for the VIA-3 era and beyond, enabling future Starship variants to launch dozens of missions more efficiently and safely, while also reducing the time needed for routine maintenance between flights. And finally, the Massey test site at Starbase Texas is now almost fully rebuilt, following the major explosion of Ship 36 in June 2025, which severely damaged the test stand and methane storage systems. As of early November 2025, SpaceX has completed most of the repairs and upgrades, including modular, easy-to-maintain tanks, liquid nitrogen ventilation fans, a new protective bunker, and repairs to the flame deflector. The site is now back in operation for Block 3 Starship testing. On November 7th, a new version of the Quick Disconnect was spotted at Massey, initially set to be tested on Starship VIA 3 aft Test Tank 39.1, which rolled out of the Star Factory on the same day. This vehicle is expected to be moved to Massey for cryogenic structural proof testing, verifying the new V3 design. Despite the previous delays caused by the catastrophic incident, Massey is now ready to support Flight 12 and the upcoming Block 3 missions. At the end of the day, taking all these factors into account, it's clear that Flight 12 won't happen before 2026. From one perspective, this delay might feel disappointing. After the successes of Flights 10 and 11, many had hoped SpaceX would close out the year on a high note. The remaining two and a half months seemed like a prime window to build momentum and showcase the capabilities of the V3 system. Missing this launch window also impacts the broader schedule. SpaceX has set ambitious goals for 2026, including full V3 demonstrations, achieving orbit, deploying real payloads, and testing the recovery of both stages. Each of these milestones requires a dedicated flight campaign. Any delays now risk compressing next year's schedule and could push back major objectives like refueling infrastructure or the first uncrewed lunar landing demonstration. However, there's another side to the story, one that suggests this delay could ultimately be beneficial. V3 is not just another prototype iteration. It represents the transition from experimental hardware to operational capability. Taking extra time to validate all ground systems before the first flight can help prevent costly failures down the line. Careful preparation of the booster, spacecraft, and launch pad will ensure that when V3 finally lifts off, it does so with the reliability and precision needed for the next phase of the program. Moreover, by officially launching V3 in 2026, SpaceX establishes a clear distinction between development eras. The incremental improvements seen in version 1 and version 2 were essential learning steps, but version 3 is where those lessons come together. It will feature optimized engines, refined structures, and streamlined ground operations. This clear transition also sets the stage for an even more advanced V4, expected to follow in 2027. Now, while SpaceX is making major strides, there's even more exciting news on the leadership front at NASA. Jared Isaacman is making a comeback. A few days ago, former President Trump officially renominated Isaacman for the position, signaling renewed confidence in his leadership potential. On Truth Social, Trump wrote, 
Jared's passion for space, astronaut experience, and dedication to pushing the boundaries of exploration, unlocking the mysteries of the universe, and advancing the new space economy make him ideally suited to lead NASA into a bold new era. Isaac Mann responded on X with sincere gratitude. Thank you, Mr. President, for this opportunity. It will be an honor to serve my country under your leadership. This renomination comes as no surprise to many in the aerospace community. Isaac Mann has built a reputation as a capable and pioneering leader, earning respect from influential figures such as Elon Musk and several former NASA astronauts. His proven track record as both a businessman and astronaut makes him stand out. Isaac Mann is perhaps best known as the founder of Shift 4, a successful payment processing company that turned him into a billionaire. But his achievements extend far beyond business. He has organized, funded, and commanded two private astronaut missions aboard SpaceX spacecraft, demonstrating his commitment to advancing human spaceflight. Most notably, his Polaris Dawn mission included the first ever private spacewalk, setting a new benchmark in commercial space exploration. Although Isaac Mann still needs Senate confirmation before officially taking office, his chances appear strong. Few candidates combine the leadership ability astronaut experience, and business success that he brings to the table. For SpaceX, Isaac Mann's return could be a decisive advantage. His close relationship with the company and with Musk could help stabilize the current uncertainty surrounding the Artemis III lunar mission. Recent NASA leadership decisions have introduced ambiguity after Sean Duffy reopened competition for the lunar lander contract, putting SpaceX's position under review. If confirmed, Isaac Mann's appointment could bring a renewed alignment between NASA and SpaceX, helping ensure continued progress toward returning humans to the moon. In addition, Vast Space, a close partner of SpaceX, hit a major milestone on November 2, 2025, with the successful launch of Haven Demo, their first technology demonstration satellite, aboard SpaceX's bandwagon for flight from Cape Canaveral.